and welcome to the first debut of The Rockin' House. This will be a forum for local musicians to talk music. And our first guest today is Alan Agunis from Free Delivery Hit the Ground Running fame. Okay, let's bring our first guest on the show today for our debut of The Rockin' House, Alan Agunis. Welcome to the show, brother. All right, guys. Thank yeah, you for thanks. having me. Yeah, thanks for thanks. coming. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thank Alan, you for guys very much. Today. Yeah. Pleasure to be here for the first debut show of the Rock House. House. <laughs> okay, and over in the corner near Marky, there is uh, a 1988 Sabre Ibanez Custom, which was used on uh, all Allen's Hit the Grun uh, records. So we're going to talk about that eventually, too. All right, Alice, let's talk about this guitar a little bit later. But right now, I want to first ask you about how you became a member of Hit the Ground Run. Oh, Mark. How's it start? Back in high school where I met the original founding member of Free Delivery, which is Paul Bacari. Uh, okay. I was fortunate enough to meet him in high school, and he was one of my idols. As many guitar players and musicians back then, he was the go-to guy uh, in O'Hara. Nice. He had his own studio in Broomall, PA, which was a blessing. And years later, after I graduated, somehow we got together and Free Delivery was formed. Um, and then shortly through a few years with that project, Free Delivery became Hit the Ground Running. And nice. this is one of the guitars that I used for the first two albums with Hit the Ground Running. And I used this on all my, my tours with Hit the Ground Running. And it's just, it's been with me since 1989, it's over 30 years old now, and wow. it's, it's one of the most amazing guitars I've ever purchased or was lucky enough to play. Awesome. So right. that's a little bit of history about that. And okay. Most people know Rock Dude, I'm a equipment junkie of sorts, uh, and that's an 88 sa Sabre, which uh, the famous guitarist Frank Cavalli was first, well he, he actually had the first issue, because he was already on the label and playing uh, Ibanez guitar, so he had a saber that was in the yellow. And if you see Frank Cavalli's, who was famous for playing for with Chick Corea in his electric and acoustic bands, and uh, tremendously gifted jazz guitar player. And uh, in the early days, um, Frank Cavalli was more like his Steve Vai. So he had one. So uh, and there shortly after, uh, Alan has a first generation saber. So how cool was that? Very awesome. Right, let's uh, talk about uh, if you were to pick one of you know your performances that you felt was most memorable. Which would you have to say if you had to pick one? Well, um, Marky, we had believe me, we had quite a few memorable shows. Sure. With free delivery and hit the ground running, but probably the most memorable for me was when we were invited to play the 1989 Second Monterey Pop Festival in wow. California. Wow. Awesome. Which we were the only East Coast band. To be invited to wow, come really? and play, yep. That's, that's great. a big deal. And, that's, that's a big um, stuff, yeah. So that uh, and that night we played. Uh, we played with different artists from um, Jeff Healy to Starship to Randy Hansen. Uh, there's quite a few more that I, I can't remember. Wow, with some time. names on there. But um, yeah, that was probably my most memorable show. Was was the second Monterey Pop Festival. What do you got there? Well, actually, I got this little piece of paper here. Somebody gave me. Uh, I believe that this is the actual invite, invitation, in June 6th of 1989 to hit the ground running to perform at this festival. Ellen, uh, wow, look at that. Let That's you, a piece uh, of history, Hold that friends. piece of history there and give a little explanation to our viewers. Well, I mean, guys, this serves as a formal invitation to hit the ground running, being asked to perform at the second Monterey Pop Festival, which was 1989. Nice. Uh, it was, it was just an amazing experience. First time I was ever in California. Okay. We visited Great. Carmel, we visited Monterey, and we visited the Pebble Beach area. Okay. And we, we were out there for a few days. Did you do any golfing? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, a lot of drinking and a lot of smoking, but other than that, it was good. Right. Um, but it was just a great event. It was outside. Nobody knew who the hell we were, and we kicked some ass. And it is on video somewhere. It's out there, but it's hard to find. But okay. it's there, and that was a great show. It was one of my most memorable experiences. That's awesome. Thank That's you for awesome. that. That's some awesome stuff there, guys. Well, we're going to have uh, Rock Dude here talk a little bit about uh, the history on 
this beautiful Shredder guitar right here by Ibanez. Uh, and, and Alan's going to give us a little insight about his performance with playing this particular guitar. Well, I mentioned it was Frank Cabali who was the high profile musician who first had one in 88. Mm -hmm. um, what I like about it is it's the only model he made in a thin body like that. Mm. And it has an ultimate Ibanez neck, particularly if you want to shred on the guitar. So if you're a fast player, it's, it's very good that way. Um, and Alan explained to me, he said that what he likes too is the fact that it's one of the best necks that they ever put on uh, an Ibanez. And it has the beautiful shark's tooth inlay. And it's just a great guitar. And uh, um, you might say that the uh, one of the better guitars in the factory was the... In 89, they actually came out with, Steve Eyes came out with his signature model, the gem, with his grip handle. Um, but for me, if I had to go between the both guitars, I really like Hal Saber's role, man. I think they're, in my opinion, the best guitar that the factory's come up with, especially if you're in the metal or hard rock. So, take it away, Alan. Well, Brian, the funny thing is with this guitar is uh, I did purchase it in February of 1989 from George's Music in Springfield, Pennsylvania. They, uh, they originally opened in 87 of uh, the 1980s in Springfield. Uh, a bunch of my friends worked there from Donald Syracuse to Pete Karras to I think Jeff Labar even had a short stint there. I'm sure many other local guitar players who are still out there today, work there. I just can't remember everyone's names. I apologize, but I just happened to walk in one day. I, I had no idea that when I walked into that store, that when I first saw this guitar, I was like, wow. I mean, I was never privy to a guitar or a Let's color bring like this. this. In for them to see it, yeah. I was never, you know, I just was like, I looked at this thing, it was hanging up, and I was like, wow, what is that? What I would say, Alan, is you probably didn't realize the magnitude of what you really had in, in, after all these years with a valuable guitar in Ibanez, the well, factory yeah. it became. I mean, it's I, legendary, I really. I was only 24 when I bought the guitar. Um, I just I just like the color of it, <laughs> basically. The color got me and the, and the thin and the like neck. And like I say, you're only the talking the thin bodies like, it's, it's like that. That's amazing. Yeah, I used to have a waist thinner than that, but uh, <laughs> you can imagine that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so um, oh, man. I walked in and I saw this guitar sitting up there and I went to my buddy Pete, who used to work there. He was a guy from my neighborhood in Drexel Hill. And I said, Pete, what is this guitar? I said, this is beautiful. What is this? And he goes, oh, this is an Ibanez Saber custom that somebody, as I remember, Somebody ordered this guitar and never picked it up. So they Good wanted, for you. <laughs> they wanted to get rid of it. So I, I walked in that day, fateful day in February. I looked at it, and I was just like, wow. It just spoke to me, you know. So I talked to him after you know, a couple little haggle hours and things and days went by. I, I said, I want this guitar. And he actually, we agreed to a price. And I found yeah. the original Receipt. Wow. <laughs> That's what I say. From 1989, guys. The original receipt of the, the guitar. The original receipt from George's Music. Now, Can't you know, read. granted, the printing and the ink is basically pretty much faded. But, if you but do what look I would at say, the, Alan, if the guy who has that receipt also takes good care of his stuff. Well, it, I, go, yes. it goes hand in it hand. It goes hand in hand, my friend. So, I actually f did not remember. I thought I bought the guitar in 88. Found the receipt. I actually bought it February. 23rd of 89 and I bought it from my friend Pete Karras and here's his name Pete right there he can barely read it <laughs> and I looked over at the price and he sold it to me for $666 and I would say the important notation right Alan, there it's all written in black and white guys <laughs> now, pink and black what you're going to tell the, the wow. audience today that that's all original shit oh uh, yes this guitar was never I never, never messed with. Never mm. messed with. I, wow, I, it's all the original. I honestly think I maybe in th it's thirty over thirty years old now, guys. I, I know it's a night. It was made in nineteen eighty eight. I've owned it since eighty nine, so now it's twenty one years old to me. Um, this guitar has maybe been set up two, maybe three times in thirty years. Original frets. Original everything. Uh huh. Wow. Most amazing <clears throat> guitar ever. Um, still holds up. Never goes out of tune. Best Floyd Rose 
like I said, use it on both albums. And it just has a ton, of ton of real deal history. Yeah. It just, just kills, man. Still got something going there. And that was there. my fingernail, no <laughs> pick. <laughs> so yeah, this this is my baby, and and I have lent this guitar to my best buddy here, Marky Z, for some of his original recordings, which are awesome. So and I have to say, this guitar rocks, man. It does I love rock, this thing. man. It's and had it's... a couple nicks, and I've dropped it a couple times. Paul Picari has nicked it a couple times, throwing things at me. Hence, that's where he got the name <laughs> Chip from. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's got amazing. a sleek back neck that you can fly on this thing. It's freaking feels so good in your hands, man. It's awesome, man. It is it's an awesome baby. guitar. It's one of my so. original. And you, you have. I even recorded our theme music to, the, to, this, to this show with this guitar. There you have it. Thank you, you sir. That's you right. have off and on had tried to revise the band and had different players in it a bit over the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't the only guitar. I was the first guitar player for the first most of the you know, the important years, and then I left after a little while, and <laughs> other guys came in, and then we had a reunion back in the 2008 area, and, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a tough band to, to copy when you don't have all the original members. You know, you had a Vinnie and Martell in it, right, and you Vinnie had Martelli, Adam Crowley, all these uh, drums, this guy Bob Cherry replaced me on guitar, um, yeah, a lot of different members. All good, though. Everybody's just awesome. But and, you've been uh, hoping in recent years to get a full original band reunion, which everybody would hope would, would, uh, would we happen. We tried it. We tried. It's just nothing, nothing, huh? Difficult to do. Everybody's yeah, got to their own lives these days. But, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? Why, why try to change something that was perfect back then? You know, we just leave it at that. So let, let me ask you this in uh, closing uh, today, uh, in a few minutes here um, on the show. Um... Is there anything in the future for you with uh, with playing music? Are you guys yeah, new um, that you're working on and new bands? I'm playing with a, a, you know a bunch of friends. I, I you know I enjoy playing with everybody. Uh, I don't care you know mm -hmm. I like rock, blues, okay. jazz, First reggae, time. Time everything. Session. I like every every genre. Um, you know I did what I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to you know keep things positive as we get older. Right. In this ever for changing world of music we're into anymore, <laughs> which is nothing like when we grew up. Nothing. So No. But other than that, it's everything's positive and there's a lot of great players, I've got a lot of great friends out there. And there's always something you can do. Just, and just and the one person you heavily mentioned, and uh, we're all friends with him, or at least you would know about him, is Paul Bacari. He's an interesting character. Yes. And oh, at yes. least the Delco whole music scene. That's true. He's, he's constantly reinventing himself. He likes to keep busy. He has his ELO band. His, yeah. his Land of Oz. His, his Land of Oz, which is the second to none Ozzy Osborne tribute band. He's Crystal Rocks. Um, Crystal Rocks. Keep going. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. slang I haven't had of... Paul help me in my band Audacity back in 2009. Yeah, Paul, he's <laughs> he's like the Davy Crockett yeah. of Delaware County. He's the pioneer. Great guy, man. Great so, musician. Yeah, awesome. And at times he doesn't Starting even to say much. He just lays back and takes it all in. Right. That's right. the way he is. Hey. Yeah, that's yeah. what geniuses do, man. But yeah, Don't if you want to see some good ELO, that's his latest project, and they're very good. If you want to hear no, Jeff Lynne material in ELO, like the 70s, they're all about it. So I would highly endorse going to see Paul McCarrick ELO group. So stay around. Once we get over the pandemic, we'll be back to normal, and we'll be rocking and seeing our favorite bands. And, uh, I'm out playing. I miss all my friends and my fellow guitars. <laughs> Most popular uh, stomping ground is the uh, Tom and Jerry, and uh, that's got to get back open. Uh, yeah. I will just go down and rip the doors open, man. Ah! Well, guys, thank you for having me here on the show of the. Uh,